Hey everybody, it's Saint from Explorers.Live. I teach people how to build DIY campers. And in this video, I am going to teach you how to wire a solar array disconnect, why you need one and which one to use. Now this video is episode number 14 in a series of videos where I teach you all the basic electrical skills and concepts you'll need to tackle the next electrical project in your camper. Now this is the solar disconnect I will be showing you how to wire. This disconnect can be found in each and every one of my wiring diagrams found at explorers.life slash solar wiring diagrams and is shown directly to the right of the charge controller in every diagram right here. The breaker and enclosure are also shown as part of the parts list found on these pages as well. So let's get to it. To wire this up, you need six-ish things. A DC rated DIN rail breaker rated higher than 30 amps and 250 volts, a DIN rail enclosure, two wire entry glands, the wires that are coming from your solar array to your charge controller, which is 10 gauge in this case, a dozen or so screws, and some cable clamps. Now the next parts are optional, but they make for a really, really clean install. Four ferrules sized to match the wires, which is 10 gauge in this case, four pieces of heat shrink, two red and two black, and some wire duct. Now, as always, I have a blog post accompanying this video that shows these step-by-step -step instructions as shown in this video, as well as a parts list for the parts I just showed. Now, you can find a link to that in the video description below. Now, before messing with this, it's important to remember that uh, if the solar panels on the roof are already wired together, there will be power coming down and might be enough to shock you. Now, I've already triple checked uh, that my solar panels are disconnected from the wires coming into this, uh, this box here. Uh, and I highly recommend that you do the same whenever you get to this point in your project. Now, let's get started. I'm gonna use a step bit and drill to drill the holes into the DIN rail enclosure box for the wire entry glands on the bottom. Now, since this doesn't need to be waterproof, it's fine for the wires to just share the same wire glands. I'm doing incoming wires in one gland and outgoing wires in the other gland. Now, if you're going to be installing multiple breakers into this box for say, a system with multiple charge controllers, be sure to offset the wire glands so that you could fit two additional wire glands in the box. And I'll show an example of this in an upcoming video, so be sure to subscribe. Next, I'm going to use some truss head screws and I'm going to secure the enclosure to the backer board. And four screws should do the trick. Next, I'm going to install some wire duct. This is completely optional, but makes for a super clean install. Wire duct is simply a piece of plastic channel with little fingers on the sides, and it's made to run wires through, and the slots make it easy for the wires to exit the channel uh, to connect to the components. It has a lid that kind of snaps into place on top, and it just keeps all of your wires nice, tidy, hidden from view, and it also adds a nice layer of physical protection to the wire itself. Next, I'm going to install my breaker onto the DIN rail, and there's a little lip on the top back of the breaker that hooks over the top of the DIN rail. Now on the bottom, there are two little tabs that extend and retract to hold the breaker to the rail. Next, I'm going to take the wires that are coming from the solar array and measure them out so that they can reach the top of the breaker and cut off any excess. Next, I'm going to strip the insulation off the ends of the wire and put a ferrule and heat shrink on the end. Now, I covered ferrule installation in depth in a previous video, so if you don't know what I'm doing here, I'll leave a link to that uh, video in the video description below and you can check that out for more info. Next, I'm going to insert the positive and negative wires into the top of the breaker and tighten down the terminal screws. Now this is the wire that will go from the disconnect breaker to the charge controller. This wire will be the same gauge as the wire on the other side of the disconnect, so I'm just going to use the excess I just trimmed off. I'm going to cut, strip, and put a ferrule and heat shrink on each one of these wires and insert it into the bottom of the breaker. Now I'm going to tighten up the wire entry glands and put the cover onto the enclosure with the provided screws. Next, I'm going to take my cable clamps and put them on the incoming and outgoing wires to secure them a bit more inside of the wire duct. 
Now this is a good idea to do, uh, regardless of if you are using wire duct or not. And the next thing to do would be to connect these wires to the solar charge controller. But that's what the next video in this series is going to be about, so be sure to subscribe because that one's coming up next. Now, why do we even need to do this? This one's simple. We need to be able to disconnect the solar array from the charge controller because the National Electric Code tells us we have to. The 2020 version of the NEC Article 690.13 says that means shall be provided to disconnect the PV system from all wiring systems, including power systems, energy storage systems, and utilization equipment, and its asso associated premises wiring. Perfect. Now, couldn't you just use a resettable breaker like this, or like this, or just use a switch like this? And the answer is no, for two reasons. Reason number one. NEC 2020 Article 690.13 Section E states that the PVC system disconnecting means shall simultaneously disconnect the PV system conductors that are not solidly grounded from all conductors of other wiring systems. Now, since camper electrical systems are generally not grounded, this means that both the positive and negative conductors from the solar array need to be able to be simultaneously disconnected, and our dual pull breaker does exactly that, where these other breakers and switches do not. Now, reason number two we can't use any of those other breakers or switches is the fact that this breaker has a max operating voltage of 24 volts, this breaker has a max operating voltage of 48 volts, and this switch has a max operating voltage of 48 volts. Now, solar arrays usually exceed the voltage capacity of any of these switches or breakers. Even two 100 watt solar panels wired in series will exceed this voltage if the temperature gets cold, since array voltage increases as the panel uh, temperature decreases. Three 100 watt panels wired in series will definitely exceed the maximum voltage of those breakers and switches every single time the sun is shining. So now that we've got a type of equipment figured out, what size do we need to use? So this whole video, I've been showing use of a breaker as a means to disconnect the solar array. This particular breaker that I've been showing is rated up to 250 volts, so we're good to go there. Solar arrays and campers pretty much never exceed 250 volts, and even the biggest Victron Smart Solar charge controller um, can only handle up to 250 volts. So we can't exceed that, we can't exceed the breaker voltage, so we're good to go there. For amperage though, it doesn't really matter as long as the amperage is over 30 amps. 30 amps is usually the max that can be pushed through an MC4 connector, so I diligently try to avoid designing an array that has an array operating to amperage uh, larger than 30 amps. For this reason, you won't find a solar array diagram on Explorer's Life that exceeds that. So just know that that breaker needs to have an ampacity rating larger than the short circuit current of your entire array. Since a breaker in the position that we just installed this can offer no overcurrent protection since the short circuit current and the operating current are so close, we just need to make sure that the breaker isn't going to trip unless we physically flip the lever. Now this means that any amperage over your array short circuit current is fine. The breaker that we installed earlier is a 63 amp breaker, which is perfect. It would be perfect for nearly every camper system. Remember, it's only being used as a means to disconnect the array and is not offering any kind of overcurrent protection. So that's why the amperage rating of the breaker can be so high. Now, if this is still a confusing concept, my last video was about when to fuse a solar array. And the concepts I covered in that video explain why it's sometimes impossible to provide overcurrent protection in a solar array. Now let's wrap this up. You now know how to install a solar disconnect. You know why we need to use a dual pole disconnect and you know why not to use any of these breakers or switches in that particular location, and you know what size of disconnect breaker to use. Now next week we're going to continue downstream in the flow of power in this system, and I'm going to cover how to wire a solar charge control. So consider subscribing if you haven't already. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, it'd be awesome if you would share it with somebody or a group who you think could use it. Hit the like button and leave any questions you've got in the comment section below. Subscribe if you want to see more DIY camper building tutorials, and I will see you in the next video.